Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these little guys right here. These are the Thai Scribe Go Hexed Pens from Urban Survival Gear. First off, though, in the name of full disclosure, I gotta let you know these guys were sent to me by Urban Survival Gear. Kelvin reached out to me, said, hey Nick, I did something crazy, you wanna check it out? And the answer to that from Urban Survival Gear is generally, yeah, yeah, I do. Right, um, he's read my disclaimer, he knows how I work, he knows I'm gonna talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. Nonetheless, we do have to assume these are the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's do a little bit of size comparison, and in practice, I don't have to do much of it, because it's honestly the same as a, a regular size tie scribe go, right? Um, so if we take this, we put it up against one of the prior editions, here's the Stonewall version, and what we see here is, yeah, but if I'll throw this up against a couple of other uh, commonly uh, commonly used pens here, we got our uh, pen I stole from a Hampton Inn, it's not that common. A Hampton Inn's going to be having a rough time. Uh, here's uh, the Pilot G2. He has a pocket jotter. And what we see here is this is a, a pretty normally sized pen. Uh, it is worth noting that both of these are the full size version. There is a smaller version, and I'm trying to figure out if I have one of those handy. I believe, yeah, okay, here's a smaller version. So you can get this hexed pattern in this smaller size if you want it to, but um, yeah, there's that. Um, next thing, this is kind of a slightly weird video in that I've already reviewed the Thai Scribe Go itself actually a couple of times, and I've talked about a couple of different patterns here. Um, this is in many ways a new run of a different pattern, but it is really cool looking. It is very different than anything Urban Survival Gear has done before. So I wanted to take a look and, you know, point out, you know, any any pros and any, any cons, things like that. And then finally, this guy's a hundred and fifty bucks, so if you're looking for a cheap pen, this is probably not it. You might want to stay at a Hampton Inn instead. That was not a paid endorsement. I want to be very clear. In fact, that was more of a confession than any. Moving on. So it is about 150 bucks. so do, do keep that in mind. So let's go on ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little pen right here. So um, to start with, honestly, it's got all the good of your good old-fashioned Die Scribe Go, right? The Die Scribe Go is an incredible pen just in and of itself, right? And it's got a lot of good things. It's a pocket, or I'm sorry, Sorry, it's a uh, Pilot G2 sort of refill, but with the option for a Parker conversion, if you want to go there, right? That's a beautiful thing. Um, it has a great functionality in that it is a uh, bolt-action style pen where the clip is the only bolt. They've done so many really nice things here. This is one of my very favorite... Um, pens, and as a result, I really like it, by the way, the smaller size is Parker, that's why this has a Parker in it, but you can't actually get a conversion kit for the full size. But I like this platform a lot um, for customization, right, for uh, various uh, different approaches, because, well, the base pen is so damn good, right, the base pen on this guy is, is really excellent, and so if Kelvin's going to use this as a, a base to do a bunch of other weird stuff, I'm I'm a hundred percent here for it. I think it is genuinely the best product they've ever made, and it's one of the best pens out there in the EDC world. Uh, so you know, yeah, cool, do crazy things here. Next thing, there are two versions of this guy. Well, technically there are four. There's the full size and the mini. The mini, of course, being this size, although not this pattern. Um, but there are uh, four versions. There's the full size and the mini, and then there's the stone wash, which is actually closer to the dark wash that Kelvin has been doing previously, right? Uh, if we put this up against a uh, uh, this is the Grimsmo Pen Saga, also titanium, but uh, very, very different finish, also stonewash. But anyway, so you got the stonewash version here, and then you got the polished version uh, down here. And you can see the difference being that this one is polished, this one is, well, a stonewashy sort of thing. But there are the two different versions of it, and that's going to be a nice thing. I think they, they have very different aesthetics, and they're going to appeal to different folks as a result. Um, it's also worth noting that both of these guys, for this initial run, will come with a bead. I couldn't care less personally. The whole bead thing never quite took off for me, but at the same time, if you're a lanyard person and you want a bead that matches your pen, and frankly, they're cool looking beads, right? I can't argue with that. I just don't have no use for them, but nonetheless, so we, we got ourselves some cool looking beads going on there. That, that, that's nice. Next thing, this guy, um, one thing that I very much like about the Stonewash version here, oh, and by the way, he's saying these are a $50 value, which, okay. Uh, but anyways, the, uh, the, the the next thing, the Stonewash version, I really like this contrast, right? The dark tie is really neat in that it is very, very dark. It's darker than most of what the titanium is, well, still being very smooth and having a little luster to it. But right up against the polished internal hex here, I'll kind of zoom in a little bit so you can see this more cleanly. But this dark ties, and then inside it, polished and almost diamond plated. And this is, by the way, not rough, right? I mean, you can feel the texture, but it's not like uh, eating your thumb alive or anything like that. 
Nonetheless, I really like that contrast. I think it really makes this pen more compelling. Uh, it makes the, the, the polished, I'm sorry, the, the stonewash one just a little bit more polished. It really pops that hex feeling out a little bit more. Whereas this guy, you know, from a distance doesn't really look like much. This guy from a distance absolutely does. And so I really, I think that contrast is great. And it really shows off that dark dye process very, very well. It makes it feel fundamentally different than uh, a lot of the other pens out there where it's just like, oh yeah, it's gray but maybe a little bit darker. This, this makes it look something different, so I appreciate that very much. Um, it is also, by the way, the same pattern for the clip and the bolt carrier. That is this little bit in the back here, which into which the clip screws, and then the clip itself. That is the same as on the all the other tie scribes. So if you already have, for instance, if you bought a fancier clip for an existing tie scribe pen, you can 100% do that and use that here. Um, and so as a result, this being modular, also I believe the same front cone on it, so you can, you know, buy this and then swap in some some of the parts you already have if you're already in the ecosystem. Again, this is why I like the idea of using one model, uh, like the tie scribe here, as sort of a platform for doing a bunch of things. That way you can kind of mix and match. And if you're a big fan of the pen, you can have a bunch of different variants and mix it up every day if that's your, your, your world. Next thing, the hex pattern on this guy is pretty great, right? Because it is not just like hex drilled in there, right? It is actually milled in there. You can see there's an outer line here. There is a, this kind of diamond platey texture in the middle there which is nice. It's a very complex pattern, right? With the nice chamfers and whatnot. It's not sharp, although it does offer some gription. 100% this is a little bit grippier than your conventional, uh, you know, finish on a die scribe here. So I appreciate that, but it's just, it's a really, really nice uh, texture. It's a really nice contrast. And frankly, it's just, it's a really cool look. Um, I think it's, it's one of the more attractive things that Calvin has done. And taking this out of the package was like, oh, really? And I, I like that very much. And honestly, I think it even dials it up. You know, the, 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 the prior one that Kelvin had done is the stonewash pattern, which is pretty cool, right? But this, doing it over the entire pen body really makes this pen feel something fundamentally different than this, right? Um, and so to me, this is a pretty wild pattern and something I appreciate. So to be all that's the good, is it dials it up a touch, even from like the stone wall in the past. Um, it, uh, a rock wall that is, uh, it makes the, the, the hex pattern is just, it looks great with a lot of extra gription here. It's got the same clip and carrier as the prior versions and swap things in. I love the contrast and the stone wash. It does come with a bead if you give a damn. Uh, it has two vault, uh, uh, two versions with the stone wash and the polish, plus the different sizes, and it's got all the good of the tie scribe go. On the bad side, it is 150 bucks rather than 100 bucks for the, uh, the the plain Jane, if you will. Um, mind you, both of those are luxury pen prices, right? But these are also very luxurious pens. But the thing is, it is the same price for both of the sizes. And Kelvin is actually saying on the website that future runs of these are going to be even more expensive at 200 bucks. I kind of get it because, A, these are being made in the States, which is a nice thing. But um, I, there's a whole bunch of machining going on on this. So I can see it costing a little bit more machine time. But, oh, that's, that's pretty damn pricey. And you have to really, really want this hex pattern to pay 100 bucks more than you would for the uh, uh, base model, which is functionally identical. This writes just as well. Uh, this may, Okay, this has a little bit more gription to it, so if that's important, then the hex is actually beneficial there. But anyways, um, 150 or even more, 200 bucks is, is wild, and they're also saying that, that the beads are going to be 50 bucks more, but, you know, that's... Uh, that's its own little thing right there. Next thing, there is still a pretty prominent line at the tip of these guys. One of the very few things that uh, that, that Urban Survival Gear has uh, struggled with is getting that uh, that transition right here to be damn near missing, right? That's one of the things that I really do like seeing in some other pen companies work, and I, I'd like to see this line be minimized a little bit more so it is one smooth sort of object except for the hex pattern. I think that'd be great. Next thing, this is much more flashy than your conventional Urban Survival Gear, right? This looks like a pen, right? You take this out of your pocket. It's a very nice pen, but it's a pen. Take this out of your pocket. It's kind of a statement, right? This is a much more like, oh, fancy kind of thing, and even more so on this guy. So you do have to keep that in mind, right? Um, that, that That's good and that's bad. I actually really like it because I kind of like flashy gear. I'm going to be honest with you here. But at the same time, that's a thing. Next thing on the, uh, the, the, the polished version, I got to be real with you. I dislike the non-matching clip and carrier here, right? The polished version is very, very striking. If you just look at this, it's like, oh, wow. And then you look at this and you're like, oh, damn, they didn't have the right bolt and clip. Um, and I checked with Galvin and I think his, his reasoning was like, oh, well, the polish would get super scratched up in there. And you know what? That could well be. I'm not going to doubt him on it. But at the same time, 
I'd kind of like to see a lighter finish on these. Or, you know, the other thing is you could also put something, you could swap in one of the Damascus something or another, and I think that might have a, a nice effect there. But either way, I just don't like the non-matching clip and uh, carrier in the back there. That's not something I, I, I particularly appreciate. And it, it ends up feeling like they're, they're kind of set up there. Even just a lighter stone wash or something like that might make that feel. I mean, because, look, even a uh, this kind of a stone wash I think would match a little bit better. Again, this is the Grimsmo pen saga. But anyways, so I just don't like the um, finish on the clip and bolt on the polished version. So that's a the thing. Then finally on the bad side, and probably the worst thing about this product is that it is a limited time sort of product, right? This is only available to order for a short time, apparently only a couple of more days uh, after this video airs, which uh, kind of snuck up on me. I'm going to be real here, but I really hate these short drop cycles, and I, I really do wish that Kelvin would either recycle these designs, right, and, you know, just come up with a pattern, like every January I offer the hex versions or something like that, so that people who watch this video down the road or people who see one of these guys out in the wild later and go, oh my god, yes, that is hexy, uh, they can go ahead and place an order down the road. Um, and frankly, this is nice enough to be an evergreen product, right? With the added gription, all of that, this could be a thing that Urban Survival Gear just sells, right? It does special orders on, you know? Sure, charge a little bit much more, or a little bit more for the special order privilege, but I, I just hate to see good designs like this disappear entirely just because of limited edition whims. Um, it is, though, of course, just an aesthetic upgrade right? And you can still buy the Urban Survival Gear Tie Scribe Go on an ongoing basis. So it's not like the annoying thing where it's like this entire model with big functional differences is not available anymore. This is just more of an aesthetic, but still. I And it is also, by the way, not a limited number produced. It's just a limited time to, produ uh, to make the orders. So you can get one if you want one. You just have to order it in the time window. But it is definitely frustrating when I see something that is this damn nice that is not available and that is, you know, produced as a limited edition by design. I'm sure it's nice for, for, for them for some damn reason, but for us, limited edition is just, it's consumer hostile, I'll be honest with you. So um, to me, that's the bad here, is that the limited time availability thing just doesn't do it for me at all. I think that's an annoyance, and uh, I hope that Kelvin uh, works past that at some point in time. It is a uh, non-matching clip. It's a little bit flashier. Still a prominent line at the tip there, and it's 150 bucks rather than 100 bucks. Uh, so final conclusion, the conclusion here honestly ain't so hard, right? Because they took one of my very favorite pens that I scribe go and they covered it with a cool intricate machining and now it's well cool right and it's got a bunch of finishes a free bead reusable parts from the other versions of it and a really nice pattern that adds some actually unique gription as well as a you know dialing it up a notch right it is pricier there's still the line at the tip I, I do wish the polished version had a clip that matched a little bit better and uh I do wish this were an evergreen product rather than a oh short time period sort of limited edition FOMO sort of affair. That's fear of missing out, by the way, FOMO. Anyways, um, but this is still a great pen. I've been carrying this guy for like three weeks. Um, I, it's just been a joy because this was a joy too, and this is a prettier version of that joy, right? Um, I started off actually liking the polished a little bit more, but the more I used it, the more I kind of was bothered by this whole thing. By the, the And then I switched to this guy. I was like, oh... Oh, yes, yes, indeedy, yes. And it ended up feeling a little bit more cohesive. It felt like the whole thing kind of worked together rather than the clip and bolt feel and mismatch. I I might feel different with it with a non-dark clip, right? It's something if I would have put Timascus in here, I'd probably be head over heels with this too. But it, ultimately, the stonewashed is the one that kind of won my heart. But... This is just, it's a really cool pen. It also feels like a neat step forward for Urban Survival Gear. Being honest with your prior work has been pretty understated, right? This is not a particularly over-the-top pen. I mean, if you handle it, it's like, whoa, that's really nice. But it's not been like, woo, fancy. Whereas this, woo, fancy. This is fancy. And so seeing this suddenly come out of Urban Survival Gear, and mind you, they kind of guided us into it with the fancy stone wall pattern. But oh boy, this is uh, this is crazy, right? Um, you know, Urban Survival Gear, and I said this every time, but like if we look at their very first offering, like the Kickstarter pen that they did for the Thai Scribe Bolt, and then we, we trace that evolution to here, it's like, whoa, this has been a lot of growth in not so, so many years. 
And I'm really curious, you know, the gap between early and modern urban survival gear is quite large, and I'm curious where they're going to be in three more years, because if this is where they're at, then holy crap. Um, and I don't believe that Kelvin is a person to stand still. He's going to be doing crazy stuff out of this. So anyways, in terms of what you should do, in terms of what you take away from the review, look, the choice is aesthetic entirely here. If you don't love the hex, then go buy a plane go, right? You'll save 50 bucks or 100 bucks down the road there. Um, and it's it's going to be every bit of an amazing pen that the, the the fancy hexy ones are, right? It just, but you'll save some money if you don't want the patent. But, or, or frankly, stick around, because it seems like he's gearing up to do a lot more of these different limited run pattern things. Uh, hopefully some of them become evergreen, just saying. But nonetheless, it sounds like he's planning to do a lot more of this kind of thing in the future. So if, you, if you're interested, then by God, you know, go for it. Uh, or even hold off, see what's coming next. But if you're loving this pattern, if you're loving the hex, um, then pick it up, because it is fancy new pants on an existing gem. Functionally, it's just as good as anything he's ever made. It just happens to have a fancy pattern. And I can see this guy very, very easily putting a uh, hex on your wallet. You'll be glad to have this guy on your six sides. I give this guy an F out of 16. That's a hexadecimal joke, by the way, not a it, it, it truly would deserve an A in that representation, but because we're in hexadecimal space, that would be an F, which is 15, because that's the... Okay, anyways, that was a bad... Hey, 16-minute review! Nice! I uh, hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Good God, that joke was bad. Bye now.